What's up guys, Chris here from anabolicmen.com where we bring you 100% research-backed information uh, to help you with your hormonal male health. Now today we are going to be talking about the five true causes of low testosterone in men. And now there's, there's basically over the last 10 years or so there's been what's known as disease mongering happening with the pharmaceutical industry heavily marketing low testosterone uh, solutions as as a hormone replacement or testosterone replacement therapy. The disease mongering comes in because it's actually not, and that's a form, that's not my own term, that's a formal term used by, by attorneys in the lawsuits that are actually happening right now against these companies because of all the side effects people have had. Uh, and, and what I mean by disease mongering or what they mean by disease mongering is the fact that low testosterone is actually not a condition in and of itself. It's not a disease in and of itself. It's actually just a symptom of other issues. So today in this video, I'm going to tell you the five true causes of low testosterone as a symptom. There, there are uh, real causes to it. And for the most part, these causes can be addressed naturally to uh, you know, eliminate the, the symptom or correct the symptom of low testosterone, bringing your testosterone back up into normal range. So the first one, well, I'll, the, the overview of the whole video, basically the first one is, is uh, micronutrient deficiencies. And uh, this can be caused by uh, basically modern diet and chemicals leaching the micronutrients from your body. And then also years worth of, of consuming, uh, you know, either anti-nutrients or nutrient poor foods. And that's really where you see a lot of the effects of aging, low testosterone and aging related low testosterone is because of the poor diet and then chemicals leaching the micronutrients from your from your body over a more prolonged period of time, you know, potentially 20 more years than, than guys in their 20s, for example, guys in their 40s or 50s. So uh, that's the first true cause of low testosterone. There's a lot of research to back that up. Uh, we're gonna talk a bit more. The second is thyroid hormone imbalance. Now thyroid is something that flies under the radar for a, a lot of men specifically. You, you hear a lot of people teaching uh, you know, thyroid stuff to women because women tend to be more concerned about their metabolisms and calories and that sort of thing than guys do. Uh, but thyroid hormones it, it, out of balance will definitely cause low testosterone issues in men. So uh, we'll talk a bit more about that here in a second. Uh, the next one is the effects of uh, pharmaceuticals and over-the-counter medications. And these can, they, they, these can have several effects on, uh, on your body in terms of disrupting the HPA and the HPG axes, uh, as well as taxing your liver. So certain over-the-counter, for example, uh, acetaminophen, Tylenol is considered benign by a lot of people. And uh, it, you know, it's just a routine painkiller. You can go to your, your pharmacy and buy it for $5, $10. You get a bottle of Tylenol. However, when you, when you consume a lot of acetaminophen, for example, this is not the only thing that does this, but you're, it is required to pass through your liver and your liver actually, when you consume a lot of it, your liver has a hard time processing the amount of acetaminophen. And what it does is will, you'll see an, uh, an uptick in SHBG production, which is sex hormone binding globulin, which binds to free testosterone. So the effects of pharmaceuticals and over-the-counter medications basically are, are one of the main, very common causes of low testosterone. And we'll talk a bit more about that here in a second. Also, and this is a, this is a major one, and people kind of downplay it because, because uh, it's so common in everybody's life, but it's stress. Now, stress can be caused from both physical and psychological things and physiological things. Uh, so that's why it tends to, to really fly under people's radar because slowly over time, you become more chronically stressed because of all sorts of external stressors that... Uh, you know, could, could be psychologically, could be anything from, from your job to your commute. And, you know, if you have to drive in a car two hours a day or whatever to get to your job, uh, that kind of thing can add up. Uh, any kind of relationship issues, just, just stress between people. That's something you just can't avoid. Lack of sleep also can stress out your body. Uh, there's a lot of psychological stress and then physio uh, physiological stresses can, can include influences from a poor diet, but can also include like chemicals that are, that, are, uh, that are phytoestrogens and estrogenic chemicals that are rampant everywhere in our, in our environment these days in the, in the modern world. Uh, these things can, can really disrupt your hormonal balance and cause 
uh, inflammation and stress in your body. So chronic stress is really what can be a major, uh, extremely common cause of low testosterone. And then the last one is medical-based lesions. Now this is the by far the least common. And a lot of times these can still be addressed naturally. However, sometimes you need to really take medical action on these sort of things. Uh, and it just is on a case-by-case -case basis. So what I mean by medical-based lesions is uh, tumors, for one. There are all sorts of uh, different hypothalamus and pituitary tumors, and they do different things. They, they will either hypersecrete or block hormone uh, production in, in these areas, in these substrates of your brain. I actually personally have a pituitary tumor, and I, I was diagnosed with it when I was 19, yet I still uh, opted to not do the hormone replacement, and I opted to not get surgery, and I still was able to overcome the effects of it in not producing testosterone or more accurately not producing LH and FSH, uh, which signal to produce testosterone. Uh, I was able to overcome that naturally anyways. So you can still get through those kind of things naturally. Uh, also, varicoceles are a very common cause of low testosterone in men because they are, they're, they're extremely common in general. And what a varicocele is, is it's a varicose vein that kind of chokes off your, your testes. So uh, I think the stat was that up to 20% of Western men have varicoceles. So that's one in five guys have this problem. And it can be a, actually quite an easy fix uh, when you can get rid of that varicocele because it does cause low testosterone in guys. And uh, I'll talk a bit about some ideas for how to get rid of those naturally without surgery. Though surgery becomes an option. So that's what I mean by the medical-based lesions is that they are um, kind of in another playing field and are, are required to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis as opposed to these other things which are generally pretty easy to solve. Now the first one, micronutrient deficiencies. It is a well-researched fact that there are a, a handful of micronutrients, i.e. vitamins and minerals, that are required for testosterone production in your body. Your body actually needs it, these, these things to fuel the metabolic processes that in the endocrine system that produce testosterone and other steroid hormones. So if you are deficient in these micronutrients, it only it's very logical too. If you're deficient in the fuel that is needed for these processes to produce testosterone, you will have low testosterone. And by addressing these, and there is research to back this up too, by addressing a lot of these things, what happens is they see in, in the studies that Guys who have low testosterone because of micronutrient deficiencies, when they correct the micronutrient deficiency, their testosterone will go back into the normal range almost immediately. So this becomes one of the easiest fixes and basically the first line of defense, the first thing that you should solve if you have low testosterone. Uh, it really helps if you get your micronutrients uh, analyzed so you know exactly what you are deficient in. Uh, but in general, there are, you can also base that off of statistics. There are a handful of things that, that guys are, are statistically deficient in and that you can address. Now, the, uh, the next thing is thyroid hormone imbalance. And I'm going to put a study up here on the screen where thyroid hormones are intricately tied uh, and this, this is not a study, it's actually a review of a bunch of studies. So you can definitely check this out. We'll put this in the, in the uh, description as well. So you can go read this. But it's a review of, a, of a, uh, the body of work of studies on the relationship between thyroid and uh, testosterone. And basically, long story short, when guys who are hypothyroid, which means they have out of balance, like a low functioning thyroid, essentially, uh, definitely they... they across the board have higher SHBG levels, lower free testosterone levels, and lower serum testosterone levels. So, and then uh, to, to make, you know, to look at the other end of the spectrum, guys with hyperthyroid actually have, where they have a, a fast metabolism, uh, they actually have high testo high, higher serum testosterone levels than normal. So what we see is just a kind of a linear relationship or a, a integrally tied relationship between thyroid and testosterone. So if you have thyroid issues or metabolic issues, addressing those will help you overcome low testosterone if, if that's the reason why you have low T. And another great person to, to read up on for, for thyroid issues and metabolism is Ray Peet. The guy has done extensive research on, on all of this stuff, so you can go check his stuff out. Uh, the third thing, again, is effects of pharmaceuticals and over-the-counter medications. Uh, it is kind of uh, insane how 
how many pharmaceuticals and, and OTC medications people take on a daily basis and how common it is and how accepted it is that ingesting these synthetic things uh, is going to solve a problem or cure some kind of problem. Now, the, the real issue is that most of these things aren't necessary for somebody. So a lot of people end up taking things just out of habit. Maybe they were prescribed something a long time ago, but they just keep taking it because they're scared if they don't take it, you know, they'll, they'll regress back into something or whatever. The problem is that the more you take these synthetic things, your body is not designed to handle them properly. And what they do is, is some of them are extremely powerful and they will cause a cascade effect, uh, a ripple effect in your endocrine system and in your nervous system. And uh, as we know, when we look contextually at the endocrine system and, and how the brain signals to your body to produce hormones, they, it works in a series of feedback loops. So if you're disrupting those feedback loops, you're gonna have a lot of side effects. And that's why most pharmaceuticals are designed to solve one thing or to address one thing, not really solve the problem, they're just Band-Aids usually. They address one thing, but then they cause a cascade of other side effects. And everyone has seen all the commercials for pharmaceutical commercials where they say, you know, this will lower your blood pr pressure, but it will you know, cause suicidal thoughts, depression, anxiety, you know, weight gain, whatever, you know, loss of sleep, insomnia. Everyone's seen those commercials and it's kind of a meme or it's a joke how, how crazy it is because just to lower your blood pressure with this synthetic thing, you know, you go and you run the risk of all these far more serious things. I would request that you would, if you have low T and if you're doing other things to help get rid of that low T problem and you're still on, you know, a handful of pharmaceuticals or over-the-counter medic medications, even, even stuff like NSAIDs, uh, painkillers like Advil and Aleve, uh, as well as acetaminophen, things that tax your liver and, and upregulate SHBG production. Just analyze what you're taking on a daily basis and get rid of what you don't absolutely need. Uh, now the, the fourth one is chronic stress. Like I mentioned earlier, this stress can come from all sorts of places, but, but the thing to note is that the word chronic is, is really, chronic stress is what causes elevated cortisol over time where it'll stay elevated and cortisol has not a completely linear relationship or you know linear negative relationship with testosterone but a near completely uh, correlative relationship where almost all the time when your when your cortisol is high your testosterone will be low so by by uh, and then if you chronically elevate that over time which usually is what happens with people you know living stressful lifestyles then their testosterone is chronically suppressed and testosterone production is chronically su suppressed because their body is in a state of stress all the time. And it is uh, kind of, basically what it does is it's running on all more adrenergic, like ad adrenaline systems because it is under that stress and, and we are not necessarily evolved to handle the crazy amount of stress that's thrown at us from a, from a nervous system and endocrine standpoint. So what your body will do is suppress production of st sex hormones because uh, traditionally, sex hormones are on the totem pole just less, re reproducing is less vital to life than uh, surviving, you know, so it's kind of the hierarchy of needs in this sense. So lowering chronic stress is going to play a massive role in increasing your testosterone levels. And again, uh, the last one is medical-based lesions. You may have a tumor, you may have a pituitary tumor, you might have a hypothalamus tumor. Uh, or you might have varicoceles, which are statistically extremely common in men. And uh, for varicoceles, I recommend using horse chestnut extract and nitric oxide production techniques. There are a lot of foods, and we write a lot about this on, on uh, Anabolic Men, free articles. Uh, there are foods that you can eat that will upregulate nitric oxide production. Also the combination of garlic and vitamin C. Uh, horse chestnut extract is great to take for varicoceles. And we actually have all these together in, in uh, the Truth Nutraceuticals Redwood, and it's it's very affordable supplement as well. So there are a lot of things that you can do to actively uh, eliminate those problems without having to go down the surgery route. So there you have it. Those are the five causes of low testosterone in modern men. Uh, remember, low testosterone in and of itself is not a disease. It is a symptom. So you don't necessarily need to, uh, it, by just treating the testosterone problem, you're not solving a problem. You're, you know, for example, if you take bioidentical testosterone, you're not solving anything. You're just putting a Band-Aid on something, and you're actually going to stop the production of testosterone in your body, uh, the natural production. So there are real causes of your symptom of low testosterone, and these are the five true causes of low testosterone. So definitely you have hope. There are 
natural ways to solve this problem and uh, you will be able to do so rather quickly within the next year. So uh, thanks for watching and, I, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up uh, and I will see you on the next video.